Historically, black Americans have faced many forms of discrimination when it comes to housing in the U.S. While some practices, like redlining, have been outlawed and policies against bias have been enacted, loopholes always seem to find a way to continue the toxic cycle of racism in the housing industry. A recent analysis of home values by Redfin found that homes in majority black neighborhoods are valued $46,000 less than homes with similar structures and features in majority white neighborhoods. To give some perspective, that's the average starting salary of a marketing manager at an advertising company. In fact, the home value gap between properties in black and white neighborhoods has essentially remained the same over the last decade or so. And advocates against undervaluing say, we're currently in the era of redlining 2.0. Homeowner Jacqueline Priestley knows a thing or two about the devaluing of homes with black owners. She works with Black Homes Matter as a community advocate and is the principal of Oak Hill Strategies. Jacqueline, welcome to Amplified. So glad to have you here. Tell us about your personal experience with bias during the appraisal process and how it led you to become one of the founders of Black Homes Matter. Hi, Isha. Good evening and thanks for having me. Um, my husband and I in 2016 realized that we wanted to buy a new build a new home in Prince George's County. We were concerned that the cost to build may not um, appraise, um, the home may not appraise for the actual cost to build, but it was a risk that we were willing to take because we wanted to remain in Prince George's County. And so we began the process and we moved into our home in April of 2021. And um, just prior to us closing, recognized that as we suspected the home did not appraise for the actual cost to build what we were more surprised though to find out is that the the difference more than four hundred thousand dollars short of the actual cost to build um that whoa sadly common here and yet less so in other areas nearby Wait, did you, you just said $400,000. That's not like 50 k That is a massive um, disparity there in the actual appraisal to the, to the cost. So you reside in Prince George's County, Maryland, which actually has made headlines after black residents claimed that their homes were being devalued simply because they lived in majority black neighborhoods. So um, give us some more context here for those who aren't familiar uh, with the county. What was going on in the real estate market at the time that led to that alarming report and what were some of the signs that homes were being devalued? Absolutely. Um, Prince George's County as a whole is majority minority. And so where we've heard stories around the country of uh, families putting up photos of white families, black families putting photos of white families to see if that could change an appraisal where and it showed that it did work. That's not something that could happen here in Prince George's County. Presumably, every household is a black household or the neighbors are. And so collectively, as an entire county, we are viewed as black. Um, and with that said, racial bias that has impacted homes across the country and African-American and black families across the country um, for decades impacts Prince George's County very differently because it impacts us as an entire county. Could, you know, could you share with us, Jacqueline, I don't know how um, detailed um, you can get on this, but I am curious about the appraisal process generally. Who are these appraisers? Who pays them? Who are they accountable to? Uh, and how is it that they're just kind of unchecked and unvetted running around deciding, you know, values that don't make any sense? Sure. So typically a home appraisal is ordered by a financial institution from the um, purchaser, well, this, and, I mean, how do I explain this? So if I'm buying a house, if I'm selling a house, um, I'm sorry, let me get this right. If I am buying, it's confusing. It just depends on where you are in the transaction. Long story short, for example, if I mm -hmm. want to sell my home and, and I want to list a price, um, buyers can be interested in my home, but if, say I have an attractive offer, and I want to accept that offer, if their banks 
appraiser does not appraise the mm -hmm. home and the bank does not accept that appraisal for the seller's requested amount, then the buyer has to come to the table with the difference. And the problem yeah. there is that most people don't have extra cash. If you're um, a first time home buyer buying say a condo in this market, which realistically can cost you upwards of 250 or $300,000 and the appraisal comes in for a list a listing of say 250 but the appraiser says or the bank says the house is only worth um 225 or what have you most mm -hmm. oftentimes people don't have the difference in cash to cover so they choose to live somewhere else and likely pay more for a home that arguably they can't even afford a higher mortgage simply because they don't have to bring as much money to the table Right. This is really complicated. And I, I'll share with you guys that I actually just encountered this situation trying to buy a home recently. And um, what Jacqueline is describing is that once you say, oh, yeah, I want this house and I'll, I'll pay the price that you're asking for, the bank, the lender, then sends out their own appraiser. And those values are based on sometimes, you know, it's based on historical value of the home. The other thing that's complicated here that happens is that real estate agents decide what they're going to list a house as based on how they ultimately are able to control the market. So a $250,000 home that might have sold for that a couple of years ago and appraised it that a couple of years ago, well, if the market feels quote unquote hot, the, 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 the sellers and the real estate agent can list it at $750,000 if they want to. A value is anything that anybody's willing to pay. That doesn't mean that the bank is going to value it at that. So you have this huge gap in what they're selling a home for versus what the valuation of it actually is, and it all just gets completely unwieldy and messy. Um, one of the root causes that experts say led to this trend that we're seeing comes back to redlining, Jacqueline. It's now an illegal practice where certain areas were rated based on how many black people live there. Um, the more black people, the lower the rating, shocker, which is why many say that appraisal bias is essentially modern day redlining. What are some other causes that contribute to black homeowners seeing their homes valued less than uh, that of white homeowners? There are several factors for one, less than 2% of all um, appraisal appraisers nationally are black. And so there's that subjectivity and that perhaps unintentional bias that comes into the process simply by the appraiser themselves. And if banks perceive black owned homes as quote unquote riskier sales or what have you, that can be a factor as well. Um, but st the reality is that in the last 35 years, that the increase in the appraisal gap for black house, black neighborhoods as compared to non-black neighborhoods has doubled. And so we have to ask ourselves, what are the, what can we do to rectify this issue? And that's where the fair mm -hmm. and unbiased appraisal advocates come in. That's the work that we're doing as a grassroots organization to help um, really people, not only here in Prince George's County, but across the country, we provide steps and tips on how you can get a fair and unbiased, presumably, appraisal. Share some of those with us. So where, where do we go from here? How can one, lawmakers better protect black people from this issue? And then what can homeowners do to protect themselves? Yeah, well, I have to really, you know, salute the Biden administration for the PAVE initiative. Um, I know that appraisal bias is a component of what they are working to address as part of the PAVE initiative. So, so from a federal standpoint, I think that that's really important to recognize. But individuals have rights. And you know, unfortunately, most people don't know what their rights are. Um, property rights, for example, are measurable. You know, We know that real estate's a tangible item. And so we want to ensure that people educate themselves on what appraisers take into consideration when they do their appraisals, like the square footage, like renovations, um, you know, general quality of the home maintenance, if you will, for example, if it's an older home, comps in the nearby area. Um, oftentimes, appraisers think that they can simply say, these are the comps that I can look at, where instead, a homeowner can say, no, actually, here are additional comps that you can consider. Or, Let, I'd like to see your appraisal. You know what? You left off a bathroom, or your square footage is actually inaccurate, or you actually did not account this um, extra bedroom, or what have you. It happens all the time. Errors happen all the time in appraisals. 
So um, people need to know that they need to review the appraisals themselves. So that's what individuals can do. But states also too have housing authorities where people can file complaints. I think it's very important that people mm. recognize the power of their voice, just like we know the power of our mm. vote. And where there are um, instances of appraisal bias occurring, it's important for people to report that. Um, make noise. We know that black homes matter, and that's why we want to arm people with all of the tools in the toolbox to protect their appraisal, to protect the value of their homes, and ultimately to protect the value of, of, of communities. And that's why I encourage everyone watching, go to blackhomesmatter.org. That's where we offer our tips. That's where we offer resources and information on the, from an individual, local, and national um, in terms of actions. All right, Jacqueline Priestley, thank you so much for coming on and talking about this really important issue with this with us. We appreciate you.